OK, I'm just going to show you a quick approach to reveal more sky detail in images, especially those that have dull, grey, overcast skies, like this one. So how do we go about it? We might try and take one approach of, say, adding a curves adjustment and bringing the curve down like that, which does reveal the sky detail. But unfortunately, we then have to compensate for the darkening of the subject. And we end up with a bit of an odd result. And it's not particularly visually pleasing. So we'll forego that approach and get rid of the curves adjustment. Instead, what we want to do is go to filters and haze removal. And once it's analyzed the scene, we can then begin tweaking the haze removal sliders to gradually bring back more sky detail. Now, although this seems to have quite a dramatic effect, there is a bit of a gotcha, and that is haloing around edges here. Now, this does unfortunately mean that we can't push the haze removal as much as we might want to, to gain back all that sky texture. So we can also tweak exposure correction, and it's about finding a balance between the strength slider and exposure correction slider. So really, part of it is down to personal taste, about deciding the threshold at which you're going to be happy with the results. So as we can see, I seem to have found a good balance between the two sliders. There's only some minimal haloing going on around the edges here. And again, if we do a before and after preview, the results we're getting are still pretty good. We've managed to bring back not just some texture in the sky, but also notice just this little bit of haze around the building itself as well. So we can go ahead and click Apply. And then as opposed to just using a curves adjustment like we did in the beginning, if we start with the haze removal and then we add a curves adjustment, we'll find it easier to kind of push the tones around a little bit and get that punchier result that we're after. So then, I'll move across to another image and we can go ahead and apply the same technique. So we can go to Filters, Haze Removal. And as you can see, there's not a lot of difference with this image. So we're going to have to get a bit heavy-handed and put the strength slider all the way up to the maximum. And if we just sort of zoom in and take a look around the edges, we can see the edges here aren't actually too bad. If we move across here, however, there's some slight haloing around the statue and this area here. Now, if we only have some slight haloing like here, we can actually apply a little technique to try and remove it. So I'll go ahead and click Apply. Then I'll go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, and Gaussian Blur Filter. And what I'll do is check Preserve Alpha, change the Blend Mode to Darken, and then use a radius of about 20 pixels. So we start to see this darkening around the edge here. Then if I just go ahead and close this dialog, what I'll do is select the Gaussian Blur layer and go to Layer and Invert. Now, just a little side note that live filter layers and adjustment layers in Photo inherently have their own layer masks. So when you want to selectively apply a filter or adjustment, you don't actually have to add a layer mask to it. You can just paint on and off. For example, I can pick up the paintbrush tool and I'll just take the hardness down to zero, increase the brush width to about 110 pixels, and then across on the color panel, just make sure my color is set to white. So black will paint off a layer mask, white will paint onto it. So we're now just going to paint the Gaussian Blur effect back on around here, where the haloing is around the statue, and also just down here where we've got a little bit of haloing 
here as well. So then, at the moment, what we're doing doesn't make much sense. So let's dive back into the Live Gaussian Blur dialog. And what I want to do is adjust the opacity. So we'll start at zero, and let's take a closer look at the statue. And as I gradually increase the opacity, that darkening is going to knock out the haloing. So you see here we've got the halo effect. We might actually see it better if I zoom out slightly. There we go. And as I increase the opacity, we start to neutralize it. But of course, go too far with the opacity and you end up with the darkening, which is practically the opposite of the issue that we're trying to tackle here. So just shy of 50%, say about 40%. It's not perfect, but if we look at the original, and let's just put it in context of the wider image, and then apply that effect, we have a much better match between the edge of the statue and the sky. So we also had some haloing down here. We can pick up the paintbrush tool and paint that in too. And look, I think we may have found just the right balance between the Gaussian blur radius and opacity. So we've managed to more or less successfully neutralize that haloing. Of course, we can at any point, because it's just a layer, we can dive back in and tweak the settings to our heart's content. So let's try a slightly lower opacity just for finer control over the blend. So there we go. I've just demonstrated how you can use haze removal to really bring back sky detail. It works really well on dull overcast days. And additionally, we've gone into detail using a live Gaussian blur filter to knock out that unpleasant halo effect that you can get from using the haze removal filter. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.